Okay, boys, would you believe it? And girls, for the last time ever, this is your Thursday night entertainment. This is Sim Racing Team Challenge. Eckhart von Glanz speaking to you live from the north of Germany. With me tonight, Andreas Hultgreen. Hello, Andreas. Hello. And of course, Jose Estrada. Hello, Jose. Hello. And yes, it is the final race in the final season of the Sim Racing Team Challenge. We are at Virtual Portimao in Algarve, in Portugal, and this is your grid. In the final position on the grid, position 25, we find Ethan Bass of Flying Dutchman Development. Position 24, that is Carlos Costa of AB Racing, and they are Portuguese, so it's their home ground here. Position 23, David Clark for Flat Out Club. Position 22, Mikael Larsson for the Blue Flag. Position 21, Collis Stroll from the Club UD. Position 20, Theo de Bruyne, also for the Blue Flag. Position 19, Joao Castelio, second of the Portuguese team's Sonic Racing. Position 18, Nick Dealey, Flying Dutchman Development. Position 17, Andy Roberts, Flat Out Club. Position 16, Massimo Martin for the course online from Italy. Position 15, Peracterios from Sweden for Good Club and UD. Position 14, Thiago Orfao for AB Racing. Position 13, last of the three title contender teams, Göran Johansson for Gup Klubben. Position 12, Matthias Klein for Torrent Motorsports. Position 11, Kevin Ledoux for the Black Rebels. Position 10, Kane Leski for the Torrents. Position 9, Dinka Andre for Water Blue Racing. Position 8, Grigory de Greef for... Black Rebels Racing, then Emil Selberg in 7 for Water Blue Racing. In 6 we find Jesper Taulborg for title contenders Flying Dutchman. In 5, Robin Johansson for contenders uh, Gutkloben. In 4, Ben Tusting, and we have a bit of a pile up here. Tusting has to go outside. Never mind, Ben, go back in. Ben Tusting, and we're starting the race in half a second. In 3, Tyler Skurlock. In 2, Marco Giolato out to spoil it for everyone here uh, as uh, like the black sheep among all these wolves and then in one Mike Simeon for the defending champions and hot contenders flat out and off he goes up the hill and down the hill and the second and the race is over and this is the final race of the hill and we have a mighty we in the back of the field this looks like a restart to me there's a massive crash in the back of the field we have a ton of water sports in the air we have dust we have smoke all over the place we have a touch here between Giuliano and Skirlock and we have Mike Simeon getting away uh, position one and two Skirlock past Giuliano uh, already Giuliano fighting back and staying in three for the moment but there's all kinds of chaos at the back of the race and let's see what race direction David Garcia does now there here's the attack by Giuliano uh, and he takes back position number two from Skirlock Skirlock down to three and Simeon already away at lightning speed while um, position number four Ben Tusting seems to just wait and see what is going on here in the top or at the top of the grid and um, I don't know about the back of the grid because I really have no chance at all. Um, Andreas what could you see there? Well a lot of smoke to begin with but uh, I think seven cars were involved in that crash um, and Thiago Hall uh, was one of them, Massimo Martin, definitely one of them, because he's missing a real win and it's fun again. Uh, David oh, Clark, Carlos Costa, uh, Gregory de Grieve. Gregory de Grieve, it went up to that position because he was uh, yeah. on the grid, he was an 8. So it really it was in the middle of the field, it was not even in the back of the field, it was smack in the middle of the field. But racers are now uh, approaching the start and finish line. And I don't think I can see David Garcia's ASR anywhere to be a yellow uh, flag here. So what uh, uh, Kane Lasky uh, is out of the race as well due to the crash. And uh, well, Masman Martin is also out and in Salbari as well. Yep, Martin uh, out of the uh, server as well here. Probably absolutely frustrated with uh, the last of the SDC races for him. The outlap and then didn't even get to the start of finish line as far as I can see. This all oh. happened before they even crossed. Yeah, I think just oh, a there. Yep. 
Oh dear, oh dear. Well, um, at the top of the field we have uh, Mike Simeon going now here into a sharp uh, right-hander and it's an uphill turn. And then he is followed by Giuliano who is cleaning out oh. at uh, position number two. What was that? Oh. Because, yes, the, there was a, a collision involving an FDR car involving the Esper. Yep, it's the Falboy and uh, Jim Candé, I think. Oh dear, are they both back on track? Yep, in uh, Falboy 9 and uh, Andre in uh, 10. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. So everything's working out nicely here for the flat out at the moment. Uh, even though they are not involved at all, they're up at the front uh, doing what they do best, racing very, very fast indeed. And um, some of their troubles are taking care of themselves, it seems. Uh, we have Tusting in four, and we have Simeon in one. And from the looks of it, Giuliato is really extremely fast here. He leaves uh, Skurlock behind, and Skurlock, make no mistake, he's one of the fastest guys out there. And he's actually starting to hunt down like some He's much closer than he was um, last lap. And uh, you see players going out uh, a little bit here off the track. We follow the most basic of all cutting rules here in the STC, which is if the game doesn't penalize you, we won't either. So players really have uh, a lot of choices uh, to make instead of the rest. And then uh, basically what every team does in the testing phase before the race is uh, see how far can we go uh, with a line that still saves time. I mean, some of the lines don't save time, but uh, how far can we go with a line that still saves time and that is uh, still legal and the game won't see anything. And yes, indeed, Giuliano is really putting the pressure here on Simeon, and he is getting closer and closer and closer with another lap or so before he catches him. And if I were Mike, I would simply let him pass, because uh, of course we are way out for the championship, for the overall standing, so why fight him? Yes, and in P4 and 5 we have uh, the second of the flat out cars being attacked by Robin Johansson from Club Kluben. Quite intense fight now. Yeah, thank you Jose for that. And Club Kluben of course really must uh, try to get past as quickly as possible. These are two of the title contenders. And we see the second of the Club Kluben cars already up to six. Sorry, to seven in the back. That means that Göran Johansson has moved up six positions already. He must have somehow survived uh, the starting crash. And he is now attacking Kevin Ledoux of the Black Rebels, just down the road. Let's stay with Robin Johansson. Robin Johansson uh, following Ben Tusting in the Königsegg, uh, so a Swedish guy following a Swedish ride here. Uh, Königsegg, of course, is a small manufacturer from Sweden. And, uh, well, from what I have seen here, the last half lap or so, Johansson is indeed just a little bit faster than Tusting. But, um, it looks as if Tusting is a bit faster on the straights, doesn't it? Or else uh, Johansson has uh, the edge in the turns. It sure does look like that. And uh, actually, I'm looking a bit further up with uh, Giuliato now chasing Simon. And uh, well, the gap doesn't get any bigger, almost like as, as it gets smaller. And Johansson now very close to Tusting, and that means Johansson has to go offline because Tusting defending his line uh, cut into the front of him. Uh, absolutely fair racing there uh, because Johansson, and here's Johansson making a move, and uh, he's pulling back. But this is a, it's a fantastic track, isn't it, for Timao? Um, it's a track that really allows you a couple of ways to take each turn, Andreas. Uh, yeah, it, and, a, and a lot, lot of uh, height differences as well. Which always makes uh, makes the track much better, in my opinion. It, it certainly does. It certainly does. Though I like Hockenheim very much. That's the one thing that is missing is up and down, isn't it? Yep. It's, especially in here, some of the turns you go up uphill, and then the turn is right behind the crest, and you don't know. You, you can't see um, actually what's what's there. If somebody has spun out or something, and you really have to delve into the unknown and then hope that everything is fine uh, once you get to the top of the crest. And here they go, down the straight, testing, and he now has one on in his substring. They both go out here, uh, approaching T1, and um, they also go out this way. Oh, and Johansson's Corvette is very, very unstable. He really has to fight to stay on the track. This is intense sim racing here, and on a very high level technically. Now you want some messages on that. You know, going to be a lot of because either the next three turns or the later and testing very late on the race, producing a lot of virtual support. And that guy's... Like this at all in this season, the last two or three seasons. 
sorry again, again, I can't please uh, have huge, a lot of engine noise. There's a huge crash, position 10, 11, 12, somewhere around there, even before players uh, cross the start and finish line. Did you see anything at all? No, 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 not really, because I was, I was just checking the, the, the formation, it was nice before reaching the last part of the, of the long corner okay at the end of the lap and uh, right. it, it, it looked uh, really clean uh, when when we showed the green lights it did, and it did. And Simeon, Simeon yeah. kind of was slow at first and then he he sped off as as is his it's perfectly perfectly correct everything well done and uh, then when Simeon passed start and finish uh, we just saw in the background a torrent flipping in the air uh, lots of small cars everywhere it was a completely unusual uh, sight for us to see yeah, and, and especially I can, uh, you have to remember that uh, Portimao uh, doesn't have a, a, a difficult corner at the end. It's almost a straight. Yep. Uh, yep so yep, yep, I, yep. I can't understand. Uh, no, neither can I. Neither yeah, can I. But possibly, uh, you, you know, it's a kind of reaction when, when the car leading brakes. The braking used to be harder and harder and harder when you move back to the field. So it, maybe yeah, possibly it was a kind of a hard braking. In, the, in those spots, so maybe they, the accident uh, was something related to the slow speed and the, and the head. Yep, and now we see Johansson very close to testing, uh, sniffing at his exhaust there, and going out here, he always takes that very outside line in that turn, and obviously gets some, a cool speed as he exits. Look at that, he's up to testing again, and up to now he doesn't find a way back, but it's extremely close. The Corvette is now on the inside. Can he sneak through on that turn here? He tries to find a way somewhere. There's an uphill uh, part again with again the apex of the turn just behind the crest. This is what is so lovely about Portimao is that the apexes, you can't really see the apexes as you go and you just have to trust your instinct that you remember where they were. And now we have this last turn which as David said uh, it, it's not really difficult well, it's difficult if you're at high speed but if you're slow as in the outlap it's not really difficult at all and this is the difficult part is that if you get carried away I mean it's always difficult if you get carried away but if you get carried outside just a little too much here you definitely get a, a, a warning a cut warning and I suppose we'll see one or two stop and goes here uh, with people going too far on the outside on that turn well, uh, Andreas, it looks as if testing can hold Johansson off, doesn't it? Uh, so far, yes. How much longer do you give him? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, not to give him. He's uh, very mature. He's, uh, yep. he knows, he knows which line to take. And, uh, yep. and he and really all. takes the defense. And look at that. He's even closing in on Skrillex. So rather than just uh, defending, he's actually setting is feeling uh, the heat now about testing the tanking, so that is uh, quite unusual. It looks to me as if you want some as for the time being given a little hunt, and uh, it's not pushing too much. Maybe uh, it's hoping the testing is going to be just a Yeah, and at the same time, it's, it's a hard track to fall from. Uh, no real happens, or it's super hard break, so it's just. Uh, yep. And you would think that turn one should, should be a, a tight corner, but uh, it's a bit of fast there. It is. And again, the only problem is don't get too far to the outside because there's a couple of people uh, waiting there. Look at that. So, uh, it's a great one. It is. It is. Definitely. Um, David, we are uh, rep 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 um, optimistic here, or this good track at Portimao. What's your experience at um, Virtual Portimao? Done any interesting games here? Well, I, 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 it's a long time I don't have a race in the Virtual Portimao cart, but, but I think it's a circuit uh, everybody enjoys because uh, the difference in heights between the sectors of the circuit, you have a lot of downhill, uphill and of camber corners, blind corners, it's it's a uh, a dare for, for a driver.
And this is a western. Oh, and attack. here's the attack. Here's the attack. Here is Johan Son, and he's slipping past. He's oh, that was so clever. That was so outstanding. Tusting had to slow down, uh, trying to find a way past Skurlock, and just that little bit of slowing down brought Tusting um, the kind of disadvantage that Johansson had been looking for all along. Now, how clever was that? Absolutely marvelous move by um, Robin Johansson, and he is now the one uh, to chase down Tyler Skurlock. But uh, Chaussee, let's let's move the camera down just two positions to Kevin Ledoux. Because there's another battle there. Kevin Ledoux in six has Göran Johansson and Jasper Talborg on his back. I mean, Jasper had to recover from uh, a little get together with, uh, we think, uh, De Grief or. Um, no, I think it was Dinka Andre. Sorry, Dinka Andre. Okay, uh, with Dinka Andre, who's a bit further down the line here. And he has obviously recovered and he's trying to, to, to regain the positions that he's lost. And it's a very close battle, three way battle again with Johansson in the, well, very hot spot here of at the same time having to put pressure on um, number six, on Kevin Ledoux, and at the same time having to defend against number eight, um, Jesper Talborg. And indeed, we see that on Talborg's Corvette, uh, the rear right lights are crashed, so there must have been a contact there with Dinka Andre. But, but uh, it is a very nice fight as well, and I think uh, Jesper is, is looking as well for a good spot or a good moment to, to do a move because uh, it will depend on how many points and how many positions can Jesper recover. Definitely, definitely. At the moment, everything's uh, playing into... Ooh, very close indeed. Uh, um, that was... Uh, Ledoux had a hard time getting out of one of these turns and he had both of the Corvettes all over his back, but that Ford is defending his position. I think just as clever as Tusting was doing before. Uh, he's not really taking a defensive line, but he's uh, taking it just defensive enough uh, to keep these other two from passing. Yeah, I agree, I agree. He's doing a nice job. I have been talking with Kevin before the race, uh, and uh, we know the, the car is not fast enough compared with the other cars on the grid. We may, maybe did a wrong decision at the start of the season, and uh, I have to say that Kevin is doing a hell of a job right now, keeping yep. the two Corvettes behind. Look at that, they get really close on the straight. I mean, he really has to take the last turn before any straight in, in perfect shape. And then at the end of the straight, they're all over him. And he manages to, well, at least have a stable gap in the more curvy parts here, the more tricky technical parts. And um, obviously, uh, the straights are the problem. Here's the attack. Nope, Talborg moves back. And I thought there was an attack coming there. But uh, yes, he decides uh, to pull back and maybe try it another time. I think the uh, the, the key uh, for granting the Jesper's overtake could be having Kevin in front because uh, Gordon is being a bit uh, slow maybe than, than what he could uh, have been. I mean, he could be faster if uh, he got no Kevin in front. Definitely. And I think uh, this is giving more options for an overtake to move. Uh, for Jesper. Yep, yep, and maybe we see the kind of maneuver that we just saw, that uh, guy number three uses the battle between guy number one and two to step past, but at the moment uh, the, the two title contenders, Woodcoven and Flying Dutchman, are so much involved with each other that uh, the do simply pulls away a little and says, okay boys, you slug it out in the back there, leave me alone, that's nice, uh, I'm taking a little break here and I'm rushing off, look at that. Uh, he gained something like uh, half a second or one second, which is one that well done. Yeah, no, Jesper is very close, I can Yep. Don't get all of you um, up to date about uh, title standings. Uh, didn't have time at the beginning of uh, our broadcast here. It's flat out racing at 417 points after nine races. Uh, followed by Flying Dutchman Racing, um, 18 points down at 399, and then followed by Good Clubben, another 36 points down, uh, sorry, um, 39 points down at 360. So really, Good Clubben's chances are theoretical at best, but the Flying Dutchman, they still really have a sporting chance if they can somehow turn 
uh, some events here in the race for their advantage. Um, at the moment, at the moment, with Tusting in four, with Johansson in three, with Skurlock, uh, Johansson in, in four, sorry. Uh, let's put it the other way around. Simeon in one, Skurlock in three, Johansson in four, Tusting in five. No, Eckert, I think you you uh, got confused yes. with Johansson. It's it's, it's Jasper in 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 eight. Yes, yes, yes sorry, like sorry, sorry. And with uh, the other Johansson in seven and Jasper Talborg in eight, uh, the points would be something like this. Hang on. Well, Eckert make make his numbers, Andreas. Don't you think that uh, it would be very important uh, for Fly Dutchman? If Jasper could pass Gordon and Kevin. Well, yeah. Um, uh, as it looks right now. Uh, oh, and here oh, it comes. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Yeah, in turn three, or maybe it was already in turn two, but it's a clean pass, and I think uh, well, you also made it a bit easy, actually. Okay, I want I want to point that uh, my comment was not a team order or something related. <laughs> No, no. <laughs> <laughs> because I, I just said that, that this, w this would be very important for them, and then Jasper made the move. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, uh, at the moment, Flat Out uh, is in a better position, but uh, 18 points uh, separating, separating the two teams, it can switch quite, uh, quite fast, to be honest. Yeah, but uh, still, I, I, I think if, if uh, now uh, Jasper uh, can overtake uh, Kevin. And then with the pit strategy and everything, maybe he could get closer to to Ben Testing, even if he's still far away. But yeah, and um, well, maybe we should go to the lead, to say, but because uh, Mike Simon is under pressure, at least from uh, Marco Giuliano, who has caught a bit of time again. Okay, but and, uh, uh, maybe maybe we can do it doing the first rundown, Eckhart. If we want. Sounds good. Sounds good. Uh, I've made up show. the numbers. I've made up the numbers at the um, and I suppose they're wrong. And I suppose uh, Tom Ilsbrooks will call us in a half a second and say, "Listen, listen, you got your numbers wrong again." Uh, I'm not leaving the best impression here, number-wise. But uh, yes, uh, position number one at the moment for um, Mike Simeon, and he's been there in the qualification. That means they have one point already from the pole position, and this would be 32 points for him. Then in position number two, we have Marco Giuliato for the course online. Indeed, ooh, and sliding into the turns here, Giuliato really on edge, uh, trying to get some advantage here on Mike Simeon. In three, Tyler Skurlock for Flying Dutchman. That would mean 26 points for them. In four, Robin Johansson for the Gubklubben. That would mean 24 points for them. Uh, sorry, 23 points for them. In five, Ben Tusting for flat out. That would mean 22 points for them, which would give them an overall of 55 points at the moment. Then Kevin Ledoux for the Black Rebels in six, under huge pressure now from Jesper. Jesper Talborg in seven for Flying Dutchman, which would mean 20 more points, which would give them 46 points at the moment. And then in eight, Göran Johansson for Gub Klubben, which would give them 19 points. Sorry, 19 points, which would sum up to 42 at the moment. So at the moment, what we have is that uh, the positions would be the same as before the race, just that the gaps would open up a little bit. So at the moment, flat out would be champions, followed by Flying Dutchman, followed by Gubklubben. But there is Dinka Andre in position number nine for Water Blue Racing. Uh, still very much. Uh, following uh, the, the top teams here. Very great job by Dinka. Then in position number 10, Matthias Klein for the Torrent. Position number 11, Mikael Larsson for Gub Klubben. Ah, pff, sorry, <laughs> it's Swedish. Sorry, Gate. Sorry, guy. Mikael Larsson, not for Gub Klubben, but of course for Blue Flag Racing. Um, how can I not know that it's my team? Never mind. This will go down as uh, my worst mistake of the season. 
and he is up from uh, Larson is up from 22 so he is up 11 positions he must have done a very convenient slalom around these um, uh, the, the spectacle that we saw uh, at the start around the cars flying everywhere and he's up in 11 in 12 another Swedish guy this time uh, for a good club for sure good club in UD Per Acterius and he's up from 15 in position 13, under a lot of pressure from the grave, it's Collis Ström, also for Gubklubben in the Gumpert. He's up from 21. In 14, Gregory de Grave, who is just now passing Ström. And he is down from uh, 8. Then in position number 14, now Collis Ström. In position number 15, Andy Roberts for Flat Out Club. And there's a nice bit of racing going on here in the back of the field, as you can see. Roberts, by the way, up from 17. In 16, Theo de Bruin up from 20. And then followed in 17 by David Clark, again of the Flat Out Club. Clark, who usually kind of skips the qualification to start from the back, to not be involved in any uh, trouble. That's the way I read him. And then he's slowly moving up the field and usually ends up somewhere in 15, 16, sometimes even up to 12 or so. I think that's very neat tactics there. David Clark for the Flat Out Club attack on Theod Bruin. Let's see if we can make it stick. De Bruin chooses a very late, very, very late. Ooh, and Clark even loses a position because look at that style. He's uh, very cautious is David Clark and De Bruin defends and that means that uh, slipping into 17 it is Ethan Bass at this point. Ooh, and now De Bruin gets hit by Ethan Bass and he has to let the two of them pass. De Bruin out, but back in. Ooh, and another crash here by David Clark and Ethan Bass. So, Clark and um, Thier de Bruyne in 18, down in 19, Carlos Costa for AB Racing. In 20, Nick Dealey for Flying Dutchman Development. He's actually down two positions. In 21, Joao Castellos for Sonic. He's down from 19. And that is all uh, the players still left on the track. So while we are going back to position number one, where Andreas tells me the show is really heating up between Giuliato and Mike Simeon, uh, with our first rundown here, I had a chance uh, to kind of look who is missing from the grid. And it seems that in the opening crash, we have lost Emil Selberg of Waterloo Racing, who was in 7. We have De Grave uh, dropped down uh, like 10, 12 positions. Uh, the second one we have missing is uh, Thiago Orfao, I think of Sonic Racing or of AB Racing. And then we also have missing um, Martin. And uh, sorry at the moment, I'm not quite sure which team he was uh, in. So I can't uh, tell you that. Course Online, I believe. Course Online. Ah, Massimo Martin, yes indeed. Uh, so we have one Course guy out, we have one Waterloo guy out, and we have, I think, either and one. We have AB a lot of for the lead we again. have a battle for the lead, and we have a huge battle for the lead between Mike Simeon and the second oh, course online guy. Again. And here comes Giuliato. He's now on the correct side, and look at that. Simeon knows that if he really wages his battle, he could lose the championship at this point. So he makes a very wise move indeed. And we have a new race leader, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen. This is Marco Giuliato for course online. And uh, he is now leading the race, uh, Mike Simeon in two, deciding to rather take 29, to rather lose three points and take 29 than to lose it all. Yeah, and he, he had a couple of lunches before as well, when we were do, doing the, yep. the, the grid rundown, he almost tapped him in the rear at the end of the start-finish straight. 
and, and lost a bit of time and then uh, he, he was almost side by side uh, at another moment so he, he did try a few times before it worked yeah, fantastic, absolutely fantastic performance here by Giuliato. It's always good to see one of the the teams that are not really at the top all of the time uh, to see one of these teams actually go for the win, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Yes, and uh, Giuliato uh, played it uh, very uh, very intelligent now because he knows uh, the pressure is for uh, for Simeon that uh, he cannot uh, uh, risk have an accident so if yep. he shows a lot of aggressivity most likely he will uh, let him go and uh, Ex indeed indeed yeah if he, if he does like the gentleman type of racing uh, Simon will say well so what I can stay in front uh, but look at the look at gap he's opening I mean this is about the place where he passed um, last lap and um, he's already up like half a second or so and they're running up uh, to the first um, Lapping maneuver, first blue flag maneuver of the race, and um, what's the timing? Does anyone have uh, a look at the watch? It should be about nice. half an hour into well, the race. Yes, Doctor. Well, well, you have a, a look in the watch. Uh, we have Gordon Johansson at pit. I think the the pit window just started. Okay, and uh, yeah. what's the time? 57 minutes to go. All right. That's. Uh, does that look like a two stopper to you? Mm, yes, it does. It certainly does to me, which is, yeah, let's see what comes of that. I would be very curious, or I am very curious. And here goes uh, the lapping maneuver, no problem at all. And uh, well done by the Sonic player there. And uh, Simeon slips past just as well and can't take advantage of the slipstream on the straight. So that is absolutely and totally fair here. And Giuliano gets carried out of that turn one but not uh, far enough for a warning so he takes all the speed out onto the street And as we see that not only Göran Johansson is down in 13, but also Robin Johansson is following Mikael Larsson, uh, his uh, Swedish uh, fellow uh, in 9 uh, and 10. Uh, it looks as if both of the Group Club and Corvettes actually pitted very early and maybe go for a two-stopper here at Portimao. Uh, if they are going for a two-stopper, it will be interesting to see what the Flying Dutchman are doing with the same, yep. with the same car. Yep, but I suppose that the group club and actually, um, I mean, the only chance they have is to do something surprising, and that might be behind the strategy. Yep, well, it, it, uh, a risky thing to do with both cars, though. <laughs> I, I, well, they I have nothing to lose. I mean, they are pretty safe in position number three. There's a huge gap to number four. Let's have a quick look uh, at the overall yeah, standings. Uh, it's flying Dutchman development. They're about a hundred points down. So even if they if none of their cars reach the finish, uh, they'll still be in three. So, what the yeah, heck? Like There's, they really have nothing to lose. So, they go for, uh, well, either this or nothing at all. Yeah, still, uh, Rodin was, uh, was up there in fourth. He was going fast. He was going fast indeed. But now all the other um, teams have to uh, contend with the first lapping maneuvers. And they're pretty much out of it. So, that might be one of the... The, the upsides here, one of the positive sides uh, of this maneuver. Andy Roberts at pit, guys. Yep, next guy pitting in, and Johansson has already passed Mikael Larsson, and he is moving up the grid just the way he should. I, um, was, I was checking yeah, the lap time, Sekart, and... Uh, uh, it looks like uh, Tyler Scarlock has been slightly faster than Mike Simeon in the last okay. four or five laps. So I, I am not sure if he will be able to close the gap because it is right now like uh, 11, 12 seconds. But oh dear, that's a long way away. 
Yeah, yeah but I, I suppose that Simeon will be. I suppose that Simeon will be looking after his tires now because he obviously lost. Uh, yeah, he, it was a really hot fight against Giuliato uh, earlier on, and now I think he is definitely trying to conserve as much of the Koenigsegg as possible as he heads into the pit stop window and um, trying to make the best of it. And here we are then in. Uh, In position 17, 16 and 15, with a massive fight between Carlos Costa for AB Racing, Nick Dealey for the Flying Dutchman Development and Theo de Bruin uh, in our pink BFR Pagani Zonta. And uh, while the two others are playing hide and seek, uh, Theo is uh, nicely left alone, but I don't think for long. I think that in this group here, Nick Dealey at this point has the fastest ride, that's the Audi. And he is now uh, trying to reach out and not touch uh, Theo de Bruyne, but uh, get past Theo de Bruyne as they had around uh, Portimao here in virtual Portugal. Also behind these uh, these three, we have uh, another fight between Colistrum and uh, Raul Castellos. Ah, even closer that one. Yeah. And um, oh, Castellos. Should say if the uh, camera could move there, Castellos tries to pass Colistrum, but they are side by side, and up the hill they go, and uh, Strum is now in the better position. Ooh. And ooh, oh, very close, and here they go. Castello sticks to a line that I suppose was not quite his and Strom goes out, Strom goes out again here and Castello has moved past. Which brings us back to these guys fighting for 15, 16 and 17 but at the time it's not really much of a fight because they're nicely and evenly spread out here on the start and finish straight and they are, uh, the, the race leader is actually getting close so it's about time uh, to think about the pit stop here for these three because that is uh, one of the neat things to do is uh, if there is a blue flag situation coming up as the guy who is about to be lapped, you better get into the pits because you're definitely going to lose a bit of time as you are being lapped since you are moving out of the way and that usually costs you about a second, maybe two seconds. And the Bruin now under heavy attack by Dili. Dili getting closer by the hour, no, by the minute, no, by the second. Very close indeed. Nick Dili is now obviously trying to make a move in one of the next turns. And let's see how long Theo de Bruin can actually defend his position. Position number 15 against uh, Flying Dutchman Developments, Nick Dili in 16, and uh, Carlos Costa for AB Racing watching as these two battle. He's much, much later on the brakes. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> Almost scary. <laughs> yeah, but then again, out of the turns, uh, Theo de Bruyne is... Oh, and now he misses this as I'm speaking. He does a very strange exit here, but that might in fact be an exit that gives him a lot of speed. No, it isn't. So Dealey again is uh, blocked here, artfully, by Theo de Bruyne as they head out onto the start and finish straight. But I suppose that Dili can slip into the slipstream and then maybe make a move at the end of the long straight. And we can see race leader Giuliato moving up. Oh, and there is a, almost a touch here as Dili is really now oh, and trying to get past. And there is the touch. And De Bruyne recovers from the touch, but too late. Dili has moved past and De Bruyne is down. Oh, and he's off! Oh, and, oh, he's, and off. he's off big time and he flips! Ouch! Oh dear, but he recovers, he recovers, he's still in the race, he's in 17 and his rear wing is still on, so it looks as if he can actually go on, but that uh, Pagani Zonta will be very difficult indeed to handle, so I suppose De Bruyne will definitely head into the pits in this lap and let that Zonta be repaired to actually bring it back home in uh, kind of good shape. It looks alright from the outside and you never know, but uh, it's probably quite dented uh, as far as the suspension and everything goes. 
So uh, let's see what Tio does uh, at the end of this lap. Uh, another potential fight we have uh, is between Canada Blue for the Black Rebels and Team Canada A for Water Blue Racing. They are fighting for 6th and 7th. Well, not fighting yet, but uh, Andre is closing and closing all the time. So everybody's pretty much doing their own race at the top. Just to fill you in on uh, the positions, it's Marco Giuliato for Chorus Online in 1, it's Mike Simeon in 2, it's Tyler Skurlock for Flying Dutchman in 3, and it's Ben Tusting also for Flat Out in 4, followed by Jesper Talborg for Flying Dutchman in 5. So guys, still, at the important. moment, it's Mike Simeon the Flat Out guys. Yes, sorry, who's in the pits? Mike Simeon. Mike Simeon, uh, the first of the... Uh, top guys here moving into the pits, and um, it and will be ben interesting testing. to see. Ben ben well. So both of the both of the eggs in the pits, so they also follow exactly the same strategy. Will be interesting to see um, where they come out with respect to the flying Dutchman guys, because obviously the Dutchmen do haven't chosen um, the two-stop strategy that the other Corvette team has chosen, that Gub Klubben has chosen, and this will really be interesting. And I don't think we have. Um, a solution to the overall standings until something like 20 minutes or so um, from the finish because it will only be then that Gub Klubben will head in for the second stop, won't it? Uh, anyway, Kurt, uh, now it's important. Let's see where the where the flat out cars rejoin because they are supposed to be faster now on, on fresh tires, but if they get uh, some traffic on, on track, it could be a problem for them. Yep, and Simeon is out in eight. But he does have a lot of breathing space. There's nothing in the front and there's nothing in the back. It was absolutely ideal. Whoever called him in did a, an absolutely great job. There's nothing there. And Mike has set. nine seconds uh, gap with the car in front of him. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant. That means he can really push for it now. Really, really push for it and try yeah. to gain one or two seconds here on the other teams. Absolutely perfect. Uh, Julia, stays out. Yep. And um, let's see where Tusting is. Tusting is in 11. Tusting um, is 11, and the gap with the car in front is like 5 oh seconds. So guys, uh, yeah, pressure. Ethan Bass uh, looks to be out of the race. He has stopped uh, by the side of the track. And um, yes. yep, he's out. Guys, Tyler Scarlock, uh, P2 at Pitt, and Theo De Bruyne as well. Okay, Theo. So Theo, definitely that Zonta is still in a fighting shape because he stayed out for another lap and guys, um yep uh, sorry I got but both, both flying Dutchman cars at pit right now Kevin Ledoux okay. uh, who was in position 5 at pit Dink Andre at pit Matthias Klein at pit looks like everybody's pitting right now okay and the half of the say, race. do we have Mike Simeon on the screen because here he is going down the straight and no, we see the before. first of the flying Dutchman pitting out and he's definitely uh, managed to keep that flying Dutchman behind him. We've seen it so much, uh, so many yeah. times this season that um, the Königsbergs were very slow in the pits. Yes, David. But Eckert, Eckert, he, he still, he still managed to to get the flying Dutchman behind, but the gap has been reduced a he lot. Yes, okay. Yeah, a lot. It was like uh, 10 seconds, or yeah, uh, around 10 seconds before the pit stop. Now it is four seconds between Mike and Tyler Skurlock, and remember, Tyler uh, tires are one lap uh, newer. Yeah, two, I think. Even and Giuliato into the pits. Race leader Marco Giuliato goes into the pits, um, and that means the new race leader is Robin Johansson on his two pit strategy. Uh, if he manages to pass, uh, actually pass Giuliato, let's see. He is now in that uh, section where he starts entering the long turn that leads uh, directly into the start and finish straight. So we actually might see Team Gubklubben in position number one in half a second. Uh, I have a, now. Yeah? A, a small update on the, on the fight uh, for fifth in the championship between the Blue Racing and the, uh, the Black Rebels. Okay. And uh, Dink Andre passed uh, Kemal Ledoux in the pits. Uh, okay. Still, uh, what we're racing only has one car in the race, and TBR yep. has two. Yep. So, anyway, I think Ani is doing his best to to see that fifth place. Guys, and just very to keep interesting. Our viewers uh, informed. Yes. Sorry, sorry, sorry again for interrupting, but never uh, mind. Mike Simeon and Tyler Skurlock 
both of them uh, managed to overtake Marco Giuliato. In the pits. Yeah, and Robin Johansson is in position number one, so we have a completely new we have a completely new lineup here. It's Johansson in one, it's Mike Simeon in two, it's Tyler Skurlock in three, and Marco Giuliato, but very close behind Skurlock in four, Ben Tosting in five, Göran Johansson in six, Jesper Talborg in seven. So it is the three top teams. Uh, both cars, both players are still in the top seven, and Marco Giuliato in between them, uh, but now down to four, and maybe, of course, trying to get back to that top position, but he now has to get past Talborg, and he has to get past Simeon, so that'll be very difficult indeed. Eckhart, uh, we have uh, Michael yep. Lasson, Terence yes. Serius at Pitts, yes. and we had uh, Nick Dilly and Carlos Costa a little while ago. I think everybody uh, did already uh, the, the pit stop, Eckhart. It looks like it, it looks like it. It's, uh, and it may just be, it may just be, it might figure out that um, the Gubklubbens don't need a second pit stop. Andreas, what do you think? Was that a very early pit stop Then they just put in as much fuel as possible and then they can run home now? Well, uh, yeah, it's possible. Or maybe they, they changed it uh, to one stopper now that they, they saw how it, how it went with the others in the pits. Yep. Uh, but they, they will suffer heavily on the tires uh, the last Ex 15 yep. minutes or something like that. Especially with the Corvette. Yeah. Especially, yeah. With, the especially Corvette. with the Corvette. I am checking the gap between Mike Simeon and Robin Johansson. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, and brilliant. Lo looks like uh, Mike Simeon is reducing it quite fast. So uh, I doubt uh, Robin managed to keep the distance without doing a second stop. And if they stop for a second time, possibly he will fall to position... Uh, six, seven, possibly. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Okay guys, we're in P8, just a rundown here of the top 7 positions before we do a rundown of 9 to the back of the field. Uh, position number 1, as I just said, Robin Johansson, followed by Mike Simeon in 2 for flat out, followed by Tyler Skurlock in 3 for Gubkluven, followed by Marco Giuliato for course online, who led the race, but is now down to 4 after the pit stops. In 5, Ben Tusting for flat out, in 6, Göran Johansson for Gubkluben and then in seven Jesper Talborg for the Flying Dutchman and this is the closest fight on the grid at the moment Matthias Klein uh, being chased by Dinka Andre we should really stay with these before we do the rundown uh, yes guys you are definitely right to pick that fight because Klein is under immense pressure Andre who tries to one way or the other get past and why is Andre in such a hurry because um, in the overall standings Water Blue Racing are just two points away from the Black Rebels Water Blue at 227 and 5 Black Rebels in 8 sorry in 6 for 225 and that is of course he's trying to get as many points as possible and he really must get past um, Matthias Klein here as quickly as possible Eckert. And there he goes. Yes, uh, David. Yes, I have some interesting information. And it is that uh, Tyler Scarlock made the fastest lap of the, of the race. Oh, brilliant. Gives them the a point. Yeah, it's a uh, 138.515 in the, in the previous lap. The next lap, the last one, have been very fast as well. And compared with uh, Mike Simeon pace right now, uh, I would say that uh, the Flying Dutchman is uh, recovering some of the gap uh, that okay. they already reduced with the pit stop, so possibly Brilliant. we will have a fight uh, in some laps. Brilliant. And uh, Ilsbrooks just uh, gave me a message here, Tom, thank you very much, on some statistics saying that the flat out had eight pole positions this season out of ten possible ones, that's absolutely breathtaking, and also at six fastest laps so far. Uh, at the moment we just hear it's the Flying Dutchman, so uh, flat out, do your job and see if you can 
uh, regain that fastest lap time because it gives you an extra point here in the Sim Racing Team Challenge. Well then, here's the rundown since Andre managed to get past Matthias Klein. Matthias Klein for um, Torrent, the only remaining Torrent uh, guy on the grid, in position number 9. Position number 10 goes to Kevin Ledoux for the Black Rebels. Position number 11 goes to Per Acterios for Gup Klubben UD. And this is the closest fight at the moment on the grid, so let's stay with these two guys for at least half a lap. It's Mikael Larsson, who I earlier on put in the Gup Klubben team. Uh, sorry, Mikael, uh, who of course is with... Um, Soon. Let me think. What was the name of that team again? Yes, with <laughs> Blue Flag Racing. And uh, it's a uh, poor Mikke. I even, when I signed up um, the players two nights ago, I signed him as Michale. Michale Larson. Eh? So you're Italian after all, my friend. Yes, Michael Larson. <laughs> And I just noticed that uh, this afternoon when I checked uh, who was going to be on the grid tonight, I said, who on, ever, who on earth is Mikael Larsson? Anyway, here he is, Mikael Larsson, uh, we call him Mikke on the forum, and Mikke is now ooh, very close indeed and making a fantastic move here on, I think, Per Acterios for Gup Club and UD. Let's see what the Zonta can do down the straight against the Gumpert. It can do a lot as uh, in a picture book move. Larson slips by. This should go into any textbook on how to overtake. Take good speed out of the last turn, conserve it one way or the other through the straight, and then use it at the end of the turn wisely. Well done, Mikhail Larson. That settles that. Actarius down in 12 and in 13. Um, following them, we have Gregory de Graeff. Uh, still trying to recover from that uh, horrible crash at the start there that uh, caught us all by surprise. In 14, second of the Gup Club in UD, Collis Stream. 15, Nick Dealy, who has just been lapped, it looks, by Ben Tusting. 16, Carlos Costa for AB Racing in their home race here. 17, Andy Roberts for the Flat Out Club. 18, another home racer, Joao Castellos for Sonic. 19, Theo de Bruin, who survived a flip after a touch with Nick Dealy earlier on. So Theo, if you still feel a little shaken, only fair. That looked absolutely horrible. And that's it. That's your grid. We're down to 19 from 25, so that's uh, six, six guys out of the game here. Uh, that was uh, four in the starting crash and two in between. Uh, wh while you were doing the, the rundown, yes, the Talbot got past you and you won some for six. Thank you very much. And also, Julia is getting closer to Tyler Skerlock for third. And I just got a little touch here by Reggie Blaine, and he says that maybe Dinka Andre got a stop and go. And so that, um, let's see how that plays out. And um, Chassé, could we move the camera to 8 and 9? Well, yeah, he's gone in that battle. Brilliant, because that's the battle between Kevin Ledoux and Matthias Klein. Matthias Klein, who had to slip. Uh, sorry, I had to let Andre pass earlier on, but Andre now with that stop and go out of the way, uh, he is under huge pressure from Kevin Ledoux. I mean, poor Matthias. He's just resolved the one battle and he thinks, okay, that guy is into the pits and out of the way, but here comes uh, Kevin Ledoux and out on the straight they go. When Ledoux tries to get some slipstream, he noticed that he couldn't make it pass without. Now he's taking the speed of the slipstream out into the break zone. Ooh, into T1 they go, little touch there. And Matthias tries to hold on, tries to battle pass, but oh, late on the brakes, both of them, Ledoux, magnificently stays in control here and makes that move stick. Well, open your textbooks again, folks. That was another one. Well done, Kevin Ledoux. Well done, Matthias Klein as well. Uh, as always, two who played the game here, and uh, Matthias Klein did everything right. He tried to put the pressure back on Ledoux the moment Ledoux was passed, but Ledoux uh, also definitely knew what he was doing 
and resisted um, that push there by Matthias Klein and uh, he stays in position number 8 while Klein is down to 9. Um, David, are you still with me? Yes, of course I can. Brilliant. Can I send you to our timing screen again? Because I'd be really interested in the gaps. Because I see that if we go back to 1, 2, 3, and 4, oh, uh, we'll see that they're closing in on Robin Johansson. He is definitely being hunted down here by the pack. Yes, yes, of course, of course. Uh, Mike Simon is just uh, 3 seconds far from Robin. Ooh, not good. And there are still 33 minutes to go, so... Uh, Robin will have no chance at all to, to keep on position one. But uh, Tyler is also closing the gap with Mike. They are only separated by a couple of seconds. Okay. So it will become really interesting. And back uh, with Ben Tasting and Jasper Talberg, we have a gap of 12 seconds between them, more or less. Will be okay, so that's, that's a off. bit more difficult. Yep. That's a big one. And we see here, as, um, if we follow number one, Robin Johansson, uh, this guy is really having huge trouble with that Corvette, trying to make it do... Oh, and we have a spin in the back by Group Club and UD. We have a spin in the back, and this brings Tyler Skurlock, uh well, under well, was pressure I, from Marco Giuliani. Well, yes. well, yeah, was a touch, actually. Uh, Tyler was trying to, to pass uh, the Group Club and UD car, wasn't uh, really doing right uh, with, the, um, with the blue flags. Uh, sorry, okay. sorry Chasse, I will interrupt you was one second. We have Robin Johansson at pit right now. Ah, and okay, there is a two-stopper. forgot to mention, but Marco Giulietto is like three, three tenths of a second behind Tyler Yes, Starlock. yes, yes, and he's now attacking. Side. He's attacking. Yeah. He's at the side of Tyler Spellog and he's passed Giulietto. There is a little touch there. But that was a clean move by Marco Giuliato, a very daring but still a clean move. Tyler Skurlock is not very happy. He's flashing his lights at uh, Marco Giuliato, but from what I could see, it was a close move. It was a very, very tough move. I don't think, though, it was unfair. I uh, just uh, was a, 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 the tiniest bit of space opening in the brake zone, and he went in. And he secured that position. And now we have the same situation that we had at the beginning of the race. We have Giuliato chasing down Simeon, and he's not far away. He's only like two or three seconds away. Yeah, I think in um, this case, uh, 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 the FDR driver was a bit frustrated for because of what happened before with the uh, yep. lap car. And uh, that's why his reaction. Yeah, because, because that, the movement that really was okay. Yep, that really brought uh, Giuliato within striking range, and he used it. The moment he had it, he used it. That was the chance, and he took it. So well By the done. way, Eckhart, yeah, David. Marco, Marco Giuliato is the fastest guy on track, and uh, he Definitely. made the fastest lap of, of the oh, race brilliant. a couple of laps ago with a 138.257. And he's flying, he's flying on track, so he he's possibly definitely. will catch Mike in, in maybe five, six laps. Yep, my suggestion too. Also, if we take into consideration what happened at the beginning of the race, uh, was that, uh, well, uh, Simeon could stand, um, or well, well could, could stick to position number one for quite a long time, but then there came a time when obviously the Koenigsegg was eating the tires, while the Audi uh, stayed pretty much clear of that problem, and uh, Giuliato could still pass. So let's see what happens here. Well then, we have Simeon one, worth 32 points at the moment. And we have Giuliato in two, we have Skurlock in three, that is worth 26 points. We have Tusting in four for 23 points. We have Talborg in five for 22 points. And Guplub, and I'm sorry to say, your best guy is Robin Johansson in 6 for 21 points. And Göran Johansson in 9 for 18 points. So that means that at the moment... Flat out racing would get 55, 56 if you count in the qualification, 56 points. 
The Flying Dutchman would get 48 and the Good Clubben would get 39 points. So that would mean that yes, we would have flat out as champions Good Clubben in two. Uh, sorry, flying uh, flat out as champions Flying Dutchman in two. Von Glan, take it easy, and Gub Klubben in three. So nothing would change in the overall standings, just that the uh, the gaps would be a bit further than before. But it's not the end of the day, it's not the end of the race. A lot can still happen in the last, what I would think, maybe 20 minutes or 25 minutes. Yeah, I think uh, at this point it's flat out losing the, the championship. Uh, yep. Something happened. I mean, they just need to bring the two cars uh, home and uh, they will be fine. And if I, I were simply... Say, we, we are trying to, to keep it a bit, a bit exciting here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, well, well. That's, well, I think that's, I, the difference, I, that's the difference between the cameraman and the commentator. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I hate when the Formula One uh, commentators do that. <laughs> when there is... <laughs> oh! Ooh! Ooh that? that was, was uh, like Theo de Bruyne. Theo de Bruyne <laughs> touched by Marco Giuliato and now Giuliato. Uh, oh, and now Skirlock touch touching again. Giuliato. Oh, well, it's, the same, it's the same. Oh, it's the yeah. same place they were in before. Second touch by Skirlock. Doesn't take advantage of it though. Did you see how close Simeon was to, to actually crash into the Bruins car? Yep. Oh. Yep. <laughs> Theo and, uh, really mixes up the field here. Marco was uh, getting really close, he was in less than two seconds from Mike yep. and yep. Uh, this incident changed everything because now Marco is like four seconds and a half behind Mike and Tyler is yep. like five seconds, they have lost a lot of time. Yep, and if Tyler is, uh, you know, is ty Tyler is at on the edge now, he might actually try to make a move because uh, Giuliato will be quite uh, ruffled, Giuliato will possibly have lost his rhythm and uh, let's see what uh, Tyler Skirlock can do in the next lap. Uh, if he wants to make a move, it has to be in this lap and uh, after this lap Giuliato will be back in stride, he will have found his rhythm and the Skirlock's chance will have passed. So he was really, he was really, he realized that this was going on, he was really trying to make a move there, but uh, uh, artfully defending here at Marco Giuliato. And uh, Tyler touched him twice, and uh, Tyler then uh, decided to not push the envelope too far, and um, decided to stay out of trouble, and not take advantage of these half spins that he caused. And um, he's now following Giuliato, they're getting close to where the action was, a lap down. And Giuliato has recovered. He is back in stride. He has found his rhythm. And look at that. Um, he is now opening the gap again to tie the Skirlock. Ooh. And that's racing, isn't it? Things can happen. Yep. You, want, you wanted it to be tight in? <laughs> no, I would never. I would hate racing to be tidy. Uh, I want it to be fair. I want it to be close. And I want some surprises in there. Okay, guys. If you want to know what lap time uh, Marco had uh, when the, the accident happened, uh, he was like four seconds off pace from his personal best. Oh dear. But but still, uh, he's flying again, and I think he he will recover. Uh, the distance he, he lost yep. because he's being uh, way faster than Mike right now. Yep, will it be enough though? How, how much time do we have left in the game? We have time enough, Eckhart. It's uh, 25 minutes left. Oh, so brilliant. I, I am sure brilliant. they will, they will uh, collide again during the race. Collide? <laughs> catch well, up. Catch up, yeah. Then first they, they will catch up, then they will collide. <laughs> Okay. No, let's hope not. Let's hope not. <laughs> How much did you pay him? No, Andreas did because to make it more exciting. <laughs> ah, yes, I thought you were asking to Andreas. Yeah, of course. He's the he's the the man, the man doing the, the dirty job here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, meet me in the alley after the race. <laughs> Andy Roberts in pits, by the way, and that looks like a drive through penalty or a stop and go penalty, sorry. Yep, stop and go. Andy Roberts out on the track again.
And let me tell you, I've just checked the grid. Uh, not a single fight. Oh. I, I was checking the same thing. <laughs> and Andy Roberts nearly crashes as he heads out of the pits. Uh, possibly it wasn't on your screen, it was on my screen because I was going back up the grid again. Uh, Joao Castellos was just coming down into turn one as Andy Roberts was leaving and um, that was very, very close indeed. Yeah, he put himself between Mike Simeon and, uh, and Giuliato. Yep. And now he moves out, so good work there. And Simi now coming up to a good club in UD and uh, trying to find a way past. Oh well, a uh, bit of a breathing space here for us commentators. Um, Andreas, if you look back on the Sim Racing Team Challenge, the last, what was it, seven seasons, eight seasons? I don't even remember how many there were. There were many. Um, What's the, what's the basic idea, uh, if you look back, uh, what, what characterized the Sim Racing Team Challenge? Uh, this is a bit like final last words here. I think we can sum it up with, uh, with the name of the, of the championship. Because it, it really is a team championship. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I mean, I don't, I'm a good with the words. <laughs> um, okay. But, but okay. you know, it's, you, you can't... Uh, put uh, only two guys uh, in your team and race for a championship because you have to have at least four of them. Yep. Or is I think more? that's... Is it six? No. I think you can manage the four drivers. Okay, that would be the least because uh, everybody's allowed five five yeah. meets, yeah. five events, so, so four would be the minimum number, but I think most of the teams here have like six, seven, eight guys. Um, in their stables, and uh, yeah, that seems to have been what the, the leading teams, what, what set them apart is that no matter what happened, they always had somebody who is lightning fast on the grid. Yep. Oh, and uh, of course, uh, you know, fair racing, and as well as, uh, as the teams having, having, um, they can give input, you know, like, like the war system, yep. which uh, I think she's here once I was uh, groundbreaking. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I'm um, very proud of it. Yeah, you know, it's, uh, and well organized as well, and yeah, top of the notch. <laughs> yeah, we even won last You remember last year we won the race department uh, special prize for the best yeah. series of the year? We were very exactly. happy with that. Thank you very much uh, again, everybody who voted for us. We, of course, feel we had it deserved, but uh, still, it was a very nice surprise to be awarded that trophy. And um, yes, I totally agree with you. Uh, sim racing uh, as a team that really sets this challenge apart. And uh, yeah, we've seen we've seen huge battles here, and we've seen absolutely fantastic teams, haven't we? Uh, Daniel from Motorsports, they were with us uh, for a couple of seasons. They won uh, twice, I think. No, I'm once. Sure. Once. Uh, they were very, very close, at least uh, two or three times. And we've had the Roaring Pipes Maniacs, uh, who were the first champions. Yeah, back in, uh, in 2008. Yep, seems like, I mean, in internet time, this is like 50 years ago. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Feels like it. And we've had uh, DHR, Danium Main Racing, uh, who left uh, after season 6 or 5 or something. But they, they, were, they won, I think, twice. Yep. Flat out, who very nearly dropped out uh, because they had a dreadful season when we had some problems with the mod, and they were struck hardest. I think their second team, the Flat Out Club, they couldn't even finish a single race uh, that season without any uh, disconnect and uh, trouble to get onto the grid and whatever. They picked such a nice car, the Shiroko, and it never worked. Now that was a dreadful car. <laughs> it looked nice. Yep. And, uh, but that, the car was the problem, obviously. There was something wrong with, uh, with the mod in that year. And then we went for the Doran. Um, then we have three seasons of the Doran. And um, so we only took one car uh, for the championship. And then uh, the big time of a flat out started. And they won the last two championships. So they're not only the defending champions, they're defending champions times two. 
and they are the new champions, let me tell you. There is very little that can stop them from being the new champions here at the Portimao, with uh, Mike Simeon still in one, Ben Tusting still in four, so they are still liable to collect um, 56 points at the end of the race. What, uh, now you have been talking about previous uh, championships and previous... Yep. What, what do you think, guys, uh, was the best uh, combination so far? In my opinion, uh, or at least for me, it was the season with, uh, with the Dorans. And I have to say thanks to Chassé because it was his proposal. Uh, for me, it was exceptional. Exce exceptional racing. The, cars the car designs were amazing. I enjoyed a lot uh, that, that series, that year. Yep, what I like about the Dorans was that everybody really had the same chance. And um, But we see this time around that even if you let um, the top teams choose last, so they, they choose like the slowest cars on the grid, they're still the top teams. Uh, it brings the field a little bit closer together, but not really very much. And personally, I never really liked the handling of the Doran. Maybe it was just too difficult for somebody of my size and uh, I never really got round to really liking the feel of it and so I wouldn't say the Doran seasons, I would say maybe the second season uh, the first season we had uh, club cars and also we had pro cars on different uh, races so we had one race with the pros and then in the second race with the club with the and then the GT Sport. Uh, sorry, sorry, the Sport, not the club. Yes, the Sport. We, we, I think we picked the BMW that time. And then the season after that, the first one with the Pro only, uh, that was my favorite season. don't know why. Uh, possibly because I could still more or less follow the pace. But uh, from that on, uh, people got just so much better and better and better at the top. It was just breathtaking. Oh, yeah, personally for me, season number two would have been the best one. Andreas, what about you? I'm thinking. <laughs> I can almost hear it. <laughs> did, did we really only have the GT Pro in Season 2? Suppose, yes. I think we had two classes no. only once. No, we had it as well in Season 2. I'm checking in the standings. Ah, you just checked. You cheated. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> 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 um, it must be... No, now I, I entered the same standings. Um, oh, we had it for three seasons? Did GP we? And GP Sport? No, wait. Oh, that can't be, that can't be. No. Um, well, Andreas thinks about we had a season. We had a season, the blue flag had the Corvette in black. That I yeah. think was season number three. That was a Am lovely, amazing car, a lovely ride, and I really liked uh, Suzuka. Yeah, I, I was I was taking part in Suzuka there, and that was one of my best memories. It was a slippery course, and uh, yeah, you it finished one really second. Uh, um, second to last, <laughs> yes. Andreas, 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 yeah, Andreas, yeah that welcome. information was not really needed. <laughs> I know. I, I, I want. <laughs> I won't tell you what was my best race so far because uh, I don't want you to tell well, my final position. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever honest. take part in any of the races, David? Yeah, I remember him racing in, um, was it Dijon, when he ran out of fuel, fighting for second or something like that? Fight, yes, fight, fight, yep, fight, I, fight, I fight, remember that, we had a good laugh. Ahead of Rami well. <laughs> and got out of wheel in the final, in the final lap, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I think season three for me was the best one, even though uh, we we had the problems with the with the the mod, as well as we picking the Ferrari, which was <laughs> pretty crap. <crushed. laughs> yeah. I fondly remember that. Uh, well, you Black Rebels have these huge problems with the Ferrari. First of all, you were going like, "Oh, we got the Ferrari! It's fantastic, wonderful!" And then oh, after race one or nice. two, after yeah. race one or two, the only reaction was, "Why on earth did we do that?" Yep. I think I think that was the reason why we changed to the Doran because we didn't want to pick <laughs> the wrong car again. <laughs> yep. No choice means you can't make a wrong choice. So <laughs> while we're talking, uh, the race is shaping up, uh, heading towards the finish. We have 15 minutes left. There is not much happening at the top of the grid. We well, still have Simeon in one. A little bit. Yeah, but only a very, very little bit. It looks as if he's run out of steam one way or the other. But he had several touches. I mean, this can definitely put you off the pace on the straight, can it? 
you can actually lose uh, far four or ah, five yeah, yeah. Uh, kilometers of top speed if you get touched too much. So that might be a problem for Giuliato that he has some sort of handling uh, problem after these touches by Tyler Skurlock's Corvette. And it's Skurlock still in three, Tusting still in four, so that's your top four, still the same. Talborg in five, Johansson in six. And so Gubkluben, yes, they chose a different strategy and it paid off for some time. And they were race leaders. It looked pretty good, but then uh, they had to realize that uh, tonight simply wasn't the night of the two-stopper. It was definitely the night of the one-stopper. But I admire them. I admire them for, for at least trying to do something different, at least trying to give it a chance. And you never know what happens, so it might have been the perfect strategy for them. Uh, just one way or the other, it didn't pay off. So, with the season ending, um, Andreas, where are you heading? Uh, no more action in the STC. What's your substitute? Uh, uh, I'm sorry, can you repeat? <laughs> where are you heading sim race? <laughs> Is there any, any substitute for the STC? Any, any new challenge on the horizon for you? Um, it's, it's called Elfren. <laughs> <laughs> We're speaking about sim racing, guys. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not really <laughs> sure. Um, I bought iRacing, so maybe I will <laughs> try to, to race that a little bit more. But, um, oh, brilliant. Yeah, yeah catch me if you can. Or oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe it's, it's the other way around. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> the other way around no. it. Uh, catch yeah, well, if I can. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, you definitely I, I don't can. Know. You really can. You don't, don't know. know. So waiting a bit for Effect Two, of course. Uh, everyone is. Everyone is. Yeah. And, and maybe um, GTR Three. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, you never know. It might be a big, big year for sim racing because uh, GTR Three is uh, somewhere in the pipeline. At least we saw that there is uh, life there in Sweden. And R Factor Two. I mean, this has been in the pipeline for ages and ages and ages. And so it might just shape up to be a perfect year for sim racing, might it not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. and and some nice features and. Uh, nice new stuff like the Fanatec new wheels. Yep. People should get uh, connected to race apartment in order to to see all the all the news about, uh, about sim racing. Yep, race department definitely a place to go. Uh, they're uh, our partners here. They uh, we have our forum space on uh, race department. So this has always been a, a great partnership uh, with race department. Very very reliable, and always with the broadcasts. And we were with uh, PSR TV for a long long time before they wholeheartedly switched to iRacing. racing. And uh, we we're happy, very happy with our new partners this season, aren't we? Yes, of course. And uh, I think. I have to thank Lutz Enger from Simrace TV because he yeah, uh, well, does way more than uh, than expected. I mean, he always does 200 percent to help you, and uh, that's yep. always something to grateful for. Yep. So huge big thanks here at the end of the final season uh, to Simrace TV. Also a big thank you for uh, PSR TV for covering the final one. Maybe even, did we cover the first season in broadcasts or did we start that in season number two? No, I yeah. think uh, first uh, season. Yeah, from yep. first season. Uh, first season. All the all the broadcasts are av available in on uh, in our, uh, oh, in our website. website. Yeah. Brilliant. Someone should actually download them and burn them and keep them for posterity. And then uh, when I turn 75, you can give them to me <laughs> as a present. <laughs> yeah, but more, more, more than this, I think most or every, every single uh, broadcast is available on YouTube as well. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, I never even checked. <laughs> it, it is, it is in, us in this format as well in the STC site, which is really nice. You can watch them live with no need of download them. Yep, yep, save space on the old By hard the way, drive. Sorry, I got a little interruption. We have Marco Giuliato just one second far from Mike Simon and uh, nine minutes to go. He's making a lot of push now, I think. Yeah, and the closest yes, five and six. We have Jesper Talborg attacked here 
by um, Göran Johansson. No, by sorry, by Robin Johansson. And Johansson just slipped past, and uh, Talborg defended artfully because Johansson overshot just like this is This looks so great. We should have done a whole season with only Corvettes. They look just fantastic. And here comes Johansson again on the inside of that long and uh, twist a turn, and out they go. And Talborg is on the rumble strips. Talborg has to slot in behind Johansson, but there is. We have the to remember that Robin is on better tires, newer tires, so yep. uh, possibly the, the, the speed difference is because of that. Yeah, and, but uh, we have to remember the stream. Watch out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here yeah. they go. Ah, Talbot doesn't make a move because very talented he, drivers, both of them. Oh, both of them, absolutely perfect. We've seen we've seen beautiful sim racing from both of them here as the season progresses. And oh, look at how your Robin Johansson just hoists his uh, Corvette uh, around those turns. It was more like Richard Burns, really, and uh, sliding all over the place. That of course eats your tires like nothing. And again here just throwing the car into that hairpin and sliding round and look at the difference to Skurlock already. Guys, uh, oh, sorry to Talborg. Yep, Andreas. Uh, we now have a fight for P1. We, we definitely have, yeah, we yeah. definitely have. So shall say, second. hop off to P1 and P2 and if uh, Simeon is a clever guy there's not much of a fight. Well, because let's hope there is a fight. <laughs> it's no, much more fun. no, no, in this case, let's hope there is not a fight because I wouldn't want to see the championship decided by um, a fight here for position number one between uh, one of the title contenders and a team that is a very fast team, a very fair team, but at this point in the championship, not one of the title contenders. But so let's, let's hope for a team Simeon fight. plays it safe. And there uh, goes Giuliato. Oh, and oh, oh, what a really touch cool. there! That wasn't clean at all. He gives the place back. That wasn't clean at all. And here comes... Ooh. Ooh. Is it the Grave or is it Ledoux? I think yeah. it's the Grave. Oh, oh. Here the and here comes Skurlock. Oh my goodness. The Grave gets out of the way. Skurlock ah, slots back in. Ooh. Oh. What a lot of argy-bargy here with uh, seven minutes to go. I, I think, think we're... Yes. For, for a moment, it, it looked to me like uh, maybe Marco thought uh, Mike was giving him room to pass, exactly. some, uh, avoiding yep, yep, yep. Uh, a fight, and then and he made the move, and then Mike Simeon uh, closed the door. Well, yeah, but he had every right to because he was still in front. But uh, that's of that's, course. that's exactly what it looked to me. I, I thought, okay, here goes Mike, opening the door and letting him slip past, and then. Um, he just finished the move, he just uh, turned in, which is perfectly okay, because it was his turn, all right, uh, he was well ahead, and then Giuliato really had no place to go. Um, yeah, so... Ju judging by, by Simeon's uh, yeah. reaction to the, uh, to the overtaking try by Giuliato, I think uh, Simeon really wants to win this one. Yeah, go definitely. On <laughs> yeah, he wants to go out on a... On a on a P1, I, I can understand that. I can fully understand that. At the end of the race, uh, you're—I mean, at the end of the day, sorry, at the end of the day, you're out there to win the race, aren't you? Um, yeah, but this is still a team challenge. They should uh, consider. Ah, come what, on, what they could lose. it's racing. Well, yeah, of course, of course, but they are risking a lot, Eckhart. You know, it's and no risk, no fun. Five minutes to go. Yeah, that, that's, 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 that's pretty true. much. It's pretty much. Uh, Frost mentality against uh, Oh, oh and out goes Giuliato trying to lap Dinka Andre. Out goes Giuliato. There was a misunderstanding there between Dinka Andre and Marco Giuliato. And Andre lets Giuliato take that position. Waits for him. That was clearly not a bad move by Dinka Andre. That was a clear misunderstanding again in pretty much the same place where we yeah, had the I think misunderstanding. Pretty much the same corner. And I think it was more or less the same one. misunderstanding. I think it was next next corner than the, yep, yep, the previous was, incident. Yep, yep, one one further down. I think uh, P T four, not T. F yeah, T four, not T three. Yeah, T four, T four, exactly. And I think it was a misunderstanding. I agree yep, with you Ekaty. again. It looked like uh, I think Andre was uh, <laughs> letting him take the apex of the corner, and then they collided in there. Uh, yep. I can't understand what happened really. Yeah, true. I mean, poor Marco, uh, the second time. In, in almost two laps, the same thing happens. It looks as if uh, he's being let through, and yeah. uh, nothing happens the moment he gets close. So that must Bad be luck. very frustrating indeed. This is really his race to lose tonight. 
Uh, bad luck for Course Online and Marco especially because yeah, possibly if we count on the, the pace, uh, he was uh, the one uh, to win the race, but uh, well, this is racing and a lot of things can happen. And Jose, do we still have time to go to 7 and 8? Uh, I mean, the race is almost finished, but only almost. And here we have Kevin Ledoux uh, putting the Martek, the Ford Martek, through its paces, uh, fighting against the, the Apollo Gumpert of Matthias Klein, who is really trying to make a push here, trying to get into that position number 7, and it is very close racing indeed by these two here. And they have been at it for at least three or four laps now. And uh, Ledoux defending for all he's worth. You can see it in these huge white um, smoky tires. Um, these uh, smoke clouds that go up from Ledoux in every brake zone. So he's really pushing that Martek to the limits. And Klein is waiting for his chance, but putting um, for his chance, but putting the pressure on as well. Guys, this is a whisper. I will be checking the clock, and I will be checking when we are going into the last lap. Race Direction says it'll keep an eye on the clock so you're not missing the final triumphant lap for Mike Simeon. But uh, at the moment, we are where the action is, and this is Kevin Ledoux. He's just now lapping Theo de Bruin, uh, who didn't have the best of luck with uh, being lapped tonight. And um, Ledoux now has gained a little again to Matthias Klein. Every time we move our camera here, Ledoux doesn't know that he's on the screen. Because every time we move the camera there, he is uh, pulling away from Klein. Oh, look at that. There is just <laughs> completely blocks up the inside uh, tires there as he goes into that hairpin. Not good for the tires, Kevin. Race direction, my ear tells me two more laps to go. So say bye bye to the STC. So while you guys are watching them fighting for six and seven, and Dinka Andre is in the pits again, I will give you without the camera a rundown of who is still with us here in the last race in the last two laps of the sim racing team challenge ever Andy Roberts is still with us in 19 for Flat Out Club Theo De Bruyne is still with us for Blue Flag Racing in 18 Collis Ström is still with us for Group Club, in, Group Club UD in 17 Joao Castellos is still with us for Sonic Racing in 16 Carlos Costa still with us for AB Racing in 15 Nick Dealey in 14 for Group Club uh, for Flying Dutchman Development, Dinka Andre still with us in 13, uh, moving down the grid I'm afraid, poor Dinka, uh, for Waterloo Racing, Mikkel Larsson in 12, uh, Blue Flag. Uh, yes. sorry, sorry for interrupting again, we are starting the final lap right now. Thank you very much, I'm finishing my rundown here, Acterios, Per Acterios in 11, De Graaf in 10, Johansson oh, sliding wildly. In 9, Matthias Klein in 8, Kevin Ledoux in 7, and the camera should move up to position number 1 now. 6 for Jesper Talborg, 5 for Robin Johansson, 4 for Ben Tusting, 3 Marco Giuliato at this time, 2 Tyler Skurlock, and position number 1 Mike Simeon who really takes it easy in this last lap. Uh, Tyler Skurlock has closed the gap considerably. Oh, Simeon definitely not taking it easy if you look at uh, what's going on in that break zone here, but he wants to bring home a final win for the defending champions for flat out racing. I can see Tom Ilsbrooks getting up at this point. Um, <coughs> champagne ready, rushes to the fridge. Is it nice and cold, Tom? You can already start fiddling with the cork. Only uh, like 40 seconds or so before you can celebrate a third consecutive championship for flat out in the sim racing team challenge. And um, second position for the Flying Dutchman, for Tyler Skurlock, he is getting closer <laughs> and closer <laughs> really close and now. closer, but it won't be enough. It will be enough for a nice close finish on our screens. And um, Jose says thank you for Mike. 
uh, sorry, to Mike. And here comes Mike, out of the last turn, well, into the last turn, first of all. And now, out of the last turn, for the last time in the Sim Racing Team Challenge, we have a winner, and this is Mike Simeon for Flat Out Racing. There he goes, Tyler Skurlock in two for the Flying Dutchman. In three, Marco Giuliato, the unlucky man of this race. In position number four, Ben Tusting. And now he's going through the last turn here, and he flashes the lights. He knows he's in the championship winning team. Position number five, Robin Johansson. That two-stop strategy was a wager, and it didn't quite pay off. Yes, the Talborg in six for the Flying Dutchman, slowing down here. And we still have a fight for seven, for eight, for nine. We still have seven. Kevin Ledoux of the Black Rebels in the yellow car. And um, he is followed by Matthias Klein, but Matthias Klein is about to be attacked by Göran Johansson in the very, very, very last turn. Matthias Klein defending against Johansson here in the last turn of the last championship. But I think he can make it stick. Let's have a look. Well, Johansson does have slipstream going uphill. Klein moves to the side. Ooh, oh, that was so close. close. That was so close. Thank you, <laughs> Matthias, and thank you, Göran, for a really, really close finish. And that was it. Those were the last players in one lap. That's it, guys. We have the interviews up next in about a minute. So, a bit of time has passed, and um, with us now is uh, not the whole podium, but we're starting out with the guy who won the very, very last race of the STC ever to secure the third title for his team. Mike Simeon, how does it feel? Uh, I think that guy, man, it feels great. It feels really good. Uh, the pressure is certainly on tonight, um, and the car felt shit, and the track was hard, um, but managed to bring it home in first. I really wasn't looking to, to take the win tonight, and uh, I would have let Marco pass at the end, but I'm so unlucky that I got caught up with a back marker. But that was a bit of a very, very close scene there. It could have, uh, you know, totally turned the whole championship, um, upended it uh, totally, and uh, had um, we would have had a totally different result. Yeah, well, that's it, you know. I, I let Marco pass in the first stint. Um, he was obviously quicker than me, um, so I was going to do it again once he got close enough, and there. Uh, just as he was getting close, uh, back marker there, uh, made contact and he was off the track. So I was very lucky to take the win there. Okay, but fast as well and a third championship in a row. So there must be something about you flat out guys that sets you apart. And with us now, Tyler Skurlock, who finished the race in position number two, started in three. Tyler, how did it feel out there tonight? Uh, it felt like I was slow. 
<laughs> slow. How come? To us, you looked very fast indeed. Oh, well, I didn't win. No, oh, but still, you ended up in two, and, and you had uh, the fastest lap time for a long time. Oh, I didn't get it at the end. I suppose, no, I'm not quite sure, David uh, <laughs> has a better grip on that, but I think it was Marco who had the fastest time, but um, okay. anyway, um, how did you see that situation between uh, Mike and Mark? You? Could you watch it? Were you close enough? Uh, I was just close enough. Uh, I couldn't keep up myself. I wanted to try and stay close enough to where I could capitalize on some sort of opportunity, but uh, this wasn't, not for the lead anyways, but for second. I was close enough. Okay, and I just had a message here from uh, Robin Johansson saying that indeed the fastest time was him, so thank you Robin for setting that straight. And I think we're still waiting for Marco Giuliato, but uh, since he's not arriving here, um, a big question to both Mike and Tyler. Uh, What's your next plans now, once the STC is over and done with for good? Where is your team heading? Oh, I don't know really, mate. I think we're all going to take a, a long break um, and then see what the next thing is. I think wait for the R Factor 2 and maybe cars and see how that works out. And uh, I do hope uh, that we've not seen the last of STC because um, it's been a great championship to be involved in and uh, thoroughly enjoyed it. So, and thanks to all you guys for all the hard work, etc. Um, it's been brilliant. Thank you very much. Tyler, where is Flying Dutchman headed? Uh, I think Flying Dutchman is all over the place, but uh, mostly we'll be at Sim Racing Pro doing the DTCC Challenge and Sim uh, Touring Car Challenge. Okay, sounds and, great. Uh, hopefully, yeah. someone can take over uh, STC and we can see it again. Uh, it was a nice concept, wasn't it, uh, with the teams uh, being in the focus and not the... Indi I mean, at the end of the day, it's, it's always the individual who has to go out there and do the job, but uh, it feels different, does it, uh, uh, doing it for the team? Yeah, I think the pressure is on, definitely, and it's for a team, you know, you can't... It's not just yourself. Whenever I race for myself, I'm not, not too worried, but uh, for STC, seriously, every uh, qualifying session, my legs are shaking, my arms are shaking, and I can't play <laughs> properly, you know. So the pressure's really on when it's for a team, and I think that sets it apart from everything else, and um, yeah, I'll miss it. Uh, I do hope we see it again. Let's see, and now with us is uh, third positioned Marco Giuliato, who for a long time was the fastest man out uh, there on the grid. Congratulations on three, Marco Giuliato. Uh, not your best night tonight. Uh, very unlucky, weren't you? No, no, uh, it was my best night, but uh, someone uh, <laughs> destroyed my, my, my work because uh, it's impossible to drive uh, like some people. I, I, I'm very, very disappointed for the, this night, for the rest of this night. Because it is not possible the a uh, uh, similar uh, thing. I think I think it's impossible to drive uh, like this. Yeah, it was fast. You, Marco. I, I, I was I, I was hoping you could make it past me. Uh, I didn't want to lose too much time, and I was hoping you could make it past me in the last lap or something without me losing time. And then yeah, all of a sudden, sure, not, 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 gets sorry, my, not, not in the last lap, uh, uh, three lap uh, to the end uh, or four lap to the end. Because if I don't uh, have the problem that I have the, with uh, some uh, driver, drivers, uh, I can uh, close the gap with you, um, I think, uh, 10 laps before the end. Uh, yeah, 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 I understand, yeah. So there, there were the some, some incidents, uh, Marco, but you were on a, on a very good pace. That's, that's a fact. You, you were very fast during the race. I, I yes, heard but it's a... Uh, <laughs> What what changed that I was fast? I was well, fast, it, but it, I, I go out uh, uh, coast for not yeah, for my course, uh, uh, mistake, but for for the mistake of. Course, of uh, at the end, you, you didn't have uh, luck, but uh, well, your performance uh, was uh, superb, despite uh, what happened, Marco. So I think uh, uh, you should be happy, and uh, we can only congratulate you for the good race you okay, did. Okay, thank you, boys. But uh, I'm uh, you. I'm sure I'm not happy. Really. No, we I'm can understand. We can understand that. Yeah, it's always difficult, isn't it? You, it was your race to lose, really. You were the fastest guy out there for a long time. You weren't in the end because uh, the group club uh, just told us that uh, they caught the fastest lap uh, towards the end of the race. But then 
things didn't play out the way uh, they should have, and there were incidents, and at the end of the day, you ended up in three. So uh, bad luck to you, Marco Giuliano, but thank you very much for, for popping into the uh, studio, popping into the studio anyway, because I know it's very difficult to talk if you really are very, very angry about what was going on on the track. Uh, so thanks very much for popping in here. You're welcome, Mike. All right. So this is it e then. Yes, yes Jose. Eckhart, I think uh, we should move. Instead of they coming here, I think we should move to the um, champions channel, to the flat out channel, and uh, and uh, celebrate with them. Like uh, I think it's worth it. If we can do that technically, I have no yeah, clue. Yeah, of course. In two seconds, you just have to go to the flat out racing channel, and that's all. Okay, off we go then. But uh, before we move there, thank you very much, Marco. Thank you very much, Tyler, for joining us in the interview. Sorry again, Marco, for that not very happy race of yours. Uh, and uh, thank you, Tyler Skurlock, uh, for finishing the race in position number two. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Jones now. <laughs> <laughs> so here we are, Eckhart. Yeah, we are in the flat out room and I can see there's champagne all over the place. So how does it feel? Uh, three time <laughs> champion. There's a lot of people in here. I didn't here. get the beers in. I, I didn't want to tempt fate tonight, so I didn't get the beers in and ready for a celebration. So I, I need to get a shot. <laughs> <laughs> We left the door. We've got well, some virtual we champagne. <laughs> who, who is in charge of the music, guys? Because it's quite silent for a party. <laughs> Mikko. Uh, <laughs> Come on, yeah, it's it's Mikko. He's probably playing the Finnish top two to us. <laughs> <laughs> David, I'm very happy that you brought Timmy along because I know that Mickey Miko in particular likes him very much. Uh, yes, say hello, course, Timmy. Course. Yes, of course. Um, I wait, I'm, I'm, I have to, to open the jail, uh, Timmy. Oh, Sorry, no. sir. We can't hear you. Oh, no, not this. Christ. Can, can, we not, can we not move David out of the channel now? <laughs> you can't. He's the race direction. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, hello, Miko. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, I think with this wonderful laugh of Timmy, we will leave you for good. We will leave the flat outs to celebrate. At least I'm off the air in 10 seconds or so. Anyway, congratulations. Guys. This was it. This was the SCC. Yes, David. Before, before you close it, uh, we yes, have, as you well, have close it. Hugo, Hugo Heckenberg here with us. The can I just, I don't know if you can hear this, can you? Yeah. No. No. Nope. Yeah. Just a little bit. I, I thought. I think it's uh, we are the champions from Queen, but just uh, <laughs> half of a second. I am very good Go with on, music. <laughs> so I think I would like to to hear some words from from Hugo. He is leading the team, uh, the second team in the standings, fighting till the end. Would like to know how was the end for them and some words for from them from from Hugo. It was a pretty, pretty, uh, a pretty heavy race. Um, we had a, a lot of disconnects uh, during the whole uh, season, but we were standing pretty good at the start. And uh, yeah, at, at the end, uh, well, um, I'm still sweating. So, <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> if we were uh, getting a, a one and a two tonight, and um, uh, uh, and the other team has got a, a, a three and a ten, uh, we would win. But unfortunately, when's that going to happen? With flat out. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I well, think that's really yeah, that's 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 I also want to, <laughs> want to say thank you to uh, everybody here. 
Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks to you guys uh, as well. And, uh, Freddie at last and Freddie Mercury takes us out of this tumultuous season and out of this mad room here that's called the flat out home you guys go on celebrating I'm off enjoying the rest of the evening and uh, this was it another interesting bye bye. season has I'm finished bye bye see you all folks <laughs> this is Eckhart von Glan speaking bye bye Chausse remember to bye 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 Andreas. Bye bye. And bye Don't bye Resurrection David Garcia. Bye bye Eckhart and uh... Bye bye Eckhart. <laughs> 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 <laughs>